Hi, my name is Ken Johnson. I'm a physical therapist with BTE Technologies. Uh, I'll be giving a presentation today with Sue Price, uh, Director of Rehabilitation at Slocum Dixon Medical Group in Utica, New York. Today we're going to be talking about the multi-cervical unit and its use in the objective measurement and treatment of the cervical spine. So there's me, I'm Ken, you've got Sue. Uh, again, thank you for, uh, for taking the time to uh, spend your afternoon with us. Today we're going to talk about uh, several different topics or issues pertaining to chronic neck pain. Uh, how not only do we um, measure it and, and evaluate it, but how do we uh, improve that? Uh, in addition, we're going to look at some of the common mechanisms of, of injury related to whiplash and associated disorders, uh, as well as that can contribute to chronic neck pain. We're going to look at the role that cervical strengthening plays in, in making that situation better. And we're also going to take some time uh, to look at uh, how some uh, clinicians have, have used the multi-cervical unit to enhance their, uh, their financial uh, part of their clinical practice as well. Uh, and uh, we've got some video demonstration to, to run through. So we asked the question, you know, why does uh, dealing with or the rehabilitation of, of chronic neck pain have to be such a pain in the neck. Uh, I can think back to uh, 15 years of, of clinical practice and uh, knowing that uh, there was only so much that I could do for my patients, uh, whether it be through modalities, manual therapy, uh, and limited strengthening exercises, whether it be using uh, rubber bands or, or isometric, you know, kind of contract uh, and, and hold type of, of activities. I knew that I could get them to a certain point, but I always felt that I was not getting them back as strong as, uh, as I wanted to because of the limitations with the, the technology and hardware that has existed for, for the last few years. As we look at the cost of disability associated with chronic neck pain, we see that it's very costly, very expensive. Uh, in the United States alone, nearly $700 million uh, is spent uh, on the treatment of neck pain. And, as you can see, my statistic here is uh, a little bit uh, old, so I would expect that this, uh, this value is considerably higher. Uh, Borgett's study in 1999 shows uh, strong comparisons between uh, higher cost, not only here in the United States, but in Europe as well. Robert Denardis, who's really been one of the, the, the fundamental um, you know, drivers behind the multi-cervical unit and who developed the, the Melbourne Protocol, which is uh, one of the, the, the largest outcomes uh, studies that has been done not only using the MCU but just dealing with the chronic neck population. Uh, Roberts uh, kind of coined the phrase that the, the MCU is the missing link uh, in the assessment and rehab of chronic neck pain. And I certainly, obviously, I have to agree with him. For me and, and for a number of therapists who've chosen the MCU, we see that that has uh, really filled in the gap uh, and help to, to get their patients back to the level uh, that they needed to be at. The multi-cervical unit itself was actually developed uh, back in 1997. Uh, it started a few years earlier than that as a simple piece of exercise equipment uh, that was designed by Hanoon Medical in Canada. The Hanoons were, were trying to build a better mousetrap. They wanted to design a, a piece of, of fitness equipment uh, that could be used to help make uh, the neck stronger. Uh, but as it was put out and, and taken around the world to get uh, feedback from clinicians, uh, Denardis uh, came up with the idea and suggested that they look at instrumenting the system. So in 1997, they put an instrumented uh, exercise unit into his clinic and he began to collect data. Simultaneously, Hong Kong Polytechnic University with Dr. Thomas Chu uh, in 2000 uh, began to do research uh, looking very uh, deeply into the, the reliability, validity of the system as well as program design, uh, age, and gender differences. Uh, and we'll talk about those uh, findings in a few moments. Subsequent years brought additional clinical uh, applications testing, whether it be looking at comparisons between rubber bands uh, and the, the multi-cervical unit or evaluating its effectiveness on naval fighter pilots. Um, the, the MCU's been published in, in, in a number of different studies uh, looking at its effectiveness. 
In 2005, uh, BT Technologies went through a massive redesign of, of the, uh, the original multi-cervical unit, uh, improving its biomechanics and its function, its footprint, uh, and in 2007, uh, updated the software to include what we call the radar graph. The radar graph is a simplified uh, assessment of, of strength, uh, and as we'll take a look in a few moments, uh, provides a very unique graphical representation of not only strength, but also the inhibition or inhibited patterns uh, that contribute to weakness and imbalance of the cervical spine. So real quickly, the, the multi-cervical unit from 1997 to 2004, uh, some of you may be familiar with this, uh, this vintage uh, model. Uh, there's been some substantial changes to the unit. Uh, we'll look at that in, in the next slide here. Uh, the the MCU as we see it now today from 2005 to present uh, communicates through a wireless system, uh, so sending signals to a, a, a computer is based on the cart, which allows you the versatility of moving the screen to either side of the unit uh, or bringing it around for the patient to view their, uh, to actually view their test results or exercise program. Some of the key features of the new MCU, uh, the first one being the addition of a, uh, an adjustable or multi-axial um, head brace. Uh, that head brace or, or uh, load cell pad uh, allows us to much more comfortably uh, accommodate the shapes of, of different uh, head types, body sizes, and so forth. So uh, major improvement in comfort. Uh, the next improvement is the, uh, the unlockable or opening halo. Uh, being able to open the halo from the front allows for a much uh, easier ingress and egress from the unit. Uh, from the biomechanical side, major improvements with the, the halo adjustment in that we can adjust the halo up and down. Uh, that allows us to accommodate for different lever lengths of the cervical spine. Um, and then finally, uh, we've got the, uh, the, the, the larger, more robust seat and motor uh, allows us to accommodate patients up to 400 pounds or 190 kilograms. The system was designed to accommodate body types within the 5th and 95th percentile. Uh, so in terms of, you know, is it, uh, and that is for North American adult males and females, uh, but the question does, uh, does occur that, uh, you know, what if I fall outside of that? Um, when falling outside of it, you know, there's, uh, there's modifications that one could make such as um, building a booster seat to try to raise the seat up. Um, you know, if somebody was to try to work with the younger adult population, uh, we've got a study that's getting ready to, to begin looking at uh, youth hockey. Uh, so in those situations, we make some modifications in the field. In terms of reliability, uh, it's important to know that the system that you're using and that you're collecting data with is reliable. Uh, this goes back to original work by uh, Dr. Greenwood at La Trobe University. Uh, so back in 2000, uh, published good inter and intra rate reliability values. Dr. Chu demonstrated, again, good to excellent uh, ratings for both active range of motion as well as strength. Um, in 2009, uh, Dr. Cote uh, at the McGill University uh, was, was able to show that both uh, good to, to uh, to excellent ICCs in both a healthy and in a, a whiplash uh, associated disorder population. And then in 2010, we have a study in review uh, that's being uh, put together by Dr. Roger Tepe at Logan College of Chiropractic. And again, the, the, the key value, the key message from this slide here is really that there is consistency. You know, study after study is showing very, very high ICCs.